Worship, welcome to Trinity. We are grateful for all of you coming here, especially today when we are going to be celebrating our three confirmands, becoming young men, becoming members of our congregation. So thank you to all of you for that. Um, this is a new month, and we're in a new season in the church. For those of you who are keeping track at home liturgically, which I'm sure you all are, but that means that the advantage of that is, I should say, is that everybody here is going to be speaking new words together. So if you're feeling a little out of place or a little disconnected or whatever, it's great because even our longtime members are feeling a little disconnected and out of place. So we're all in this together. This Sunday, in fact, we are beginning something new in our congregation uh, that we'll be going forward with is that up to this point, we have been distributing communion using individual uh, communion kits, which you can find at either entrance. This Sunday, we are going to begin distributing communion from the table. So what that means for you is that if you wish to come forward, and by the way, if you are not comfortable with coming forward, if you want to stay in your spot in the pew and continue to share communion using the communion individual communion kits, that is totally appropriate. It is the same meal. It's the same blessing. So if you want to stay in your spot, you can absolutely do that. Let one of our greeters know, and we'll be sure to get one of these communion kits to you uh, by the time we have communion. For those who wish to come forward, we will have the words of institution and the various uh, language that we use for the great Thanksgiving, preparing ourselves for communion. Then I will invite you forward, myself and uh, assisting minister uh, Jackie. She and I will be masked. We're going to wash our hands. We're going to do this as safely as possible, and we're going to come up socially distant. So if you want to come up as a family, that's great. If you're in the next family in line, just give a little distance between people. It'll work out great. I will give you the bread. Jackie will give you, uh, she will be holding a tray with individual cups in it, and she will hold that out to you, and then out on the wings, if you will. So let's say we're serving on this side, and Don chooses to come up to have communion up front. I'm calling out Don because I can see you right there. Um, so Don comes up, he's going to have communion. He's going to receive the bread from me, he's going to receive a cup from Jackie, and then he's going to continue going to these trays right here, and you just drop the cup in there, you're good to go. Um, that's how communion is going to work. So again, if it feels a little fumbly, a little bumbly, it's okay, because nobody in this space has done this for two years. For two years, we have not done this. So it is kind of true that this is a new thing for us. Um, to kind of get back into this pace. But we also thought this might be kind of a fun Sunday to step back into this process. Hopefully, foreseeably, for the future, we will get to continue to do that again. And I really want to be clear about this. If you are not comfortable coming forward for any reason at all, doesn't matter what it is, but if you are not comfortable coming forward, you are welcome to have one of the communion kits um, that we have at either entrance. It is the same meal. It is the same blessing. So I just want to be sure that you know about that as well. All the words for the service will be up on the screens, including all the words for all the songs. It will all be up there. If you are musically inclined and would like to follow the notes of the music, there are red books in the pews in front of you. Um, all the pages uh, should be labeled up there to find them in the book. Other than that, we're here to worship God. We're here to celebrate these three young men. Let our worship begin.
The Holy Spirit calls us together as the people of God, giver of life in the midst of the life exploited by greed and abuse of power. Giver of life in the midst of life shortened by hate and exclusion. Giver of life in the midst of life destroyed by war and conflict. Giver of life in the midst of the groaning for fullness and dignity. Giver of life, you created us all in your image as we squandered this gift of life. The whole of humanity and creation laments with us. When God created the whole creation, God saw that it was good. God loved it. God continues to love all. May the giver of the life make all things new through Jesus Christ, our Savior. May you know that you are forgiven and loved in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, speak to us that we may speak in living echoes of your tone. As you have sought, so let us seek your straying children lost and lone. Oh, lead us, Lord, that we may lead the wandering and the wavering feet. Oh, feed us, Lord, hungering once with manna sweet. Oh, fill us with your fullness, Lord, until our very hearts o'erflow in kindling thought and glowing word, your love to tell, your praise to show. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Let us pray. God of days behind and days ahead, we give you thanks for all that we have seen you do in our lives, even in our disbelief. Continue to open us to your presence in strange and simple ways and shape our hearts to remember your forgiveness. Lead us by your love. In Christ's name we pray. According to John, the 16th chapter. Jesus says, I have much more to say to you, but you can't handle it now. However, when the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you in all truth. He won't speak on his own, but will say whatever he hears and will proclaim to you what is to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and proclaim it to you. Everything that the Father has is mine. That's why I said that the Spirit takes what is mine and will proclaim it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. It seems a tall ask to put our trust in God, because we don't really know what that means. When you put your trust in God, what does that mean to you? Does that mean that we're going to get answers to prayers? We may not know what the answer looks like. It may not be exactly what we want, but does it imply that we'll get a response from God? Is trusting God meaning that when we read scripture, or we read a book, or we read Harry Potter, or we listen to music or a podcast, that something is going to leap out and catch our ears, or catch our eyes, or catch our heart, and remind us that God is near? What does it mean for you to trust God? Maybe it means that at some point we're going to have some sort of a glowing path that's going to go in front of us and, and show us exactly how we are meant to walk with God. That hasn't happened to me yet. Maybe you've been more fortunate what does it mean to put our trust in God? Jesus seems to be saying that, th those are not the words he uses in our reading for today, but Jesus seems to be saying that to us, saying that to the disciples, our call is to trust God, to trust that somehow God is with us, that God is somehow working on our side, or at least supporting us in some way that we can't quite understand. We are here today to celebrate these three young men because they have accomplished a lot and they have done a lot of work. Now they might argue that they haven't done much at all, but I would argue that they have in spent their entire confirmation time in the midst of the pandemic. What that means is that every plan, every trip, every place that we would have gone, every immersion trip that we would have taken to Chicago, everything we would have done got obliterated. It meant that sometimes one of us was sick. Sometimes we weren't sure if we were supposed to be inside or outside. It meant that sometimes, well, our schedules con would conflict, so we have to cancel this date and move it over to here. It was chaotic, it was dysfunctional, and it was our program. And why I say that they've accomplished a lot is they endured all of that and they are still here. Yes, it's probably true that maybe parents were involved with getting them here, and so let's name that and be real. At the same time, there really is no metric for becoming affirmed in our baptism. It is just a part of our staging in life here in this church. It's about being affirmed for what they've done. So we're here to celebrate them and give thanks for them. And at the same time, we have this, this wonderful reading from Jesus out of chapter 16 in the Gospel of John, where Jesus has this opening line for us to dwell on. I have much more to say to you, but you can't handle it now. I wonder if there are any other verses in the Bible that are more likely to create an eye roll than this one. Jesus looking at us straight in the eyes and saying, yep, I've got other things to give you, like great wisdom and understanding and great gifts and all these wonderful things, but I can't give them to you yet because you can't handle it. Probably because we would mess it up. 
let's also be honest with that. We are dysfunctional people. No one in this, in this building is immune to dysfunction. We come from dysfunctional homes. We come from dysfunctional organizations. We come from dysfunctional teams. We come from dysfunctional schools. We come from dysfunctional places of work. This house is built on dysfunction. It's painted into the walls. It's built into the fabric and the foundation of this space because we humans were the ones who built it, so it is what we bring to this space. But also Jesus, when he says this line, I have much more to say to you, but you can't handle it now, there is an also an air about that that there seems like that there must be some distance between us and God. And for many of us, we feel a distance between ourselves and God. Now, sometimes that distance is nothing more than just what St. Paul would call a, a hazy mirror. So it's kind of dim, and we kind of have a vague idea that God is there, but we can't quite understand. There's other times, and maybe these are more common times for you or for me, where God feels not just distant, but far off like on the other side of a chasm, like on the other side of a wall, on the other side of some obstacle that we can't get over, and we're not quite sure if our prayers are making it. We're not quite sure if God knows what we are even up to. God seems to be off in some heavenly throne far away, and we're down here trying to figure it out. All throughout the Gospel of John, Jesus is talking about, or at least alludes to, this sense of distance that we feel. And it comes and goes, and sometimes it's great, and sometimes it's small, but often we feel separate from God. And if we were to hang out with Jesus in the Gospel of John, Jesus seems kind of otherworldly. Jesus uses words that don't make any sense. Jesus talks about a God that we can't quite comprehend. This God, by the way, that we're called to trust in and to follow and believe. Jesus seems to allude to this distance. You and I know this distance. We felt this distance. Maybe right now we're feeling this distance between ourselves and God. And yet we're being invited, called on to trust in God. Now, one thing that we tend to do then, because we are also dysfunctional people, is that if we feel a distance from God and we believe maybe that distance was created by God, well, then now we convince ourselves that maybe we're on our own, so we have to figure this out by ourselves, so maybe we don't even need God. But then what we will do, because we all do this, because this is what humans are prone to doing, is then we start building up the walls between ourselves and God, but more importantly, we build walls between ourselves and our neighbors. We build walls between ourselves and our parents. We build walls between ourselves and our, our teammates, our coworkers, our classmates. We begin to create distance, more distance. We create more of a chasm, more of a gap. We even go to the point of pushing other people away because if we have to do this on our own, well, then we don't need anybody else. And in fact, we don't want anybody else. And here's Jesus trying to invite us to hang out with a God that we don't quite understand and we can't even see and doesn't make much sense. I have much more to say to you, but you can't handle it now. Our humanness, we're gonna hear that and we're gonna roll our eyes. We're gonna feel like God is pushing us away. But I also wonder if, if Jesus is trying to help his disciples understand that Jesus knows that we feel that distance. For those of you who want to do a Bible study at home, starting at about chapter 13 in the Gospel of John, Jesus takes the disciples, you and me, gathers us up in a private space and takes everybody else away. So all those sick people, all those hangers on, all those bandwagon jumpers, all those people who are following Jesus around for all those chapters up to this point, they're all gone. It's just you and me and Jesus. And for all these chapters, Jesus is just hanging out with us, naming where we are, and where we are is we're feeling separate from God. We're being honest with God, and Jesus names that, even acknowledges the fact that at some point we are going to feel a great chasm between us and God because this is our reality. This is who we are. But what Jesus is also trying to help us to understand, which we'll never understand, is this idea is that we are so deeply loved that no matter where we are, who we are, what we've done, where we're going, or what we will do tomorrow, God is with you. That God loves you. God loves these three young men. God loves their families. God loves you. And God will stop at nothing to be in relationship with you. 
No matter what we try to do, no matter how many walls and barriers that we try to put up between ourselves and God or between ourselves and people in our lives, no matter how much we try to tell ourselves that we are on our own, Jesus is trying to remind us that you are not on your own. You have not been abandoned by God. You are loved by God. You are forgiven by God. You are claimed by God. You are granted new life by God. That's the promise that we have in these waters that we are, that we are affirming this day is that when we drown in these waters, Christ rises us to a new life. We are made brand new. Every day you are brand new. A new creation. An absolute reset. Every day. And yeah, that makes no sense. And yet that's the promise that Jesus gives us, gives to you. You are loved. You are forgiven. You are redeemed. And here's the part that maybe we can't handle. Maybe this is what Jesus means by this. It's a gift. There's nothing you can do about it. God loves you. We're going to break every commandment. We are going to obliterate our relationship with God. We will get to points where we absolutely disbelieve that God even exists because the chasm is so great, it does not matter. God still loves you. God still moves with you. God still listens to you. God still walks in your life with you. Maybe that's why Jesus kept going. He didn't stop at that part about we can't handle it. He keeps going and says, however, when the spirit of truth comes, she will guide you in all truth because there is no gap. It's what we feel in our dysfunction, in our brokenness. It's what we create. But God creates relationship. God creates forgiveness. God creates redemption, and it is for you. So maybe this whole idea of trusting God, which doesn't make any sense, we're not quite sure exactly how it's going to work or how we're supposed to do it. Maybe trusting God just simply means moving in relationship. And we can't always see God, and we can't always understand how God is working in our lives, and, and sometimes we can't even believe. But God also surrounds us with community. God surrounds us with family. When we can't have family, God surrounds us with friends. When we struggle in our relationships with friends, God continues to surround us in love. There is nowhere we can go where God is not in our lives. Jesus is inviting you in all the ways that we can and cannot believe to know that you are not alone. You are worthy of love. You are worthy of forgiveness. You've been washed in grace. Amen. Please rise, you're able. abundantly brings as we journey toward home may your presence be known
precious river ever flowing now carry us home now with praise and thanksgiving we join the song all our welcome we gather to sing loud and strong not enslaved but set free from now on all will be one in jesus one in water baptized and set free These persons seek the prayers and support of the community as they grow into maturity by the grace and power of God. Sponsors, who do you present for affirmation of baptism? We present Cooper, who desires to make public affirmation of their baptism. Okay. We present Caleb, who desires to make public affirmation of their baptism. In response to Jesus' invitation, let the children come unto me and do not hinder them. These young people have been baptized into Christ and clothed with Christ. As members with us in the baptismal priesthood of Christ, they have been called to be disciples of Christ and servants of God in the world. As these young men stand on the verge of adulthood, we ask God to guide them into maturity and to walk with them as they begin to discern where adulthood may lead. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for Caleb, Cooper, and RJ, whom you have made your own by water and the word and baptism. You have called them to yourself, enlighten them with the gifts of your spirit, and nourish them in the community of faith. Uphold your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism, and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. All right, gentlemen. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? If so, say, I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? With the whole people of God, we confess our faith. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Caleb, who are you in this community? My name is Caleb Ayler. I am a child of God. I am a man, a young man, but still a man. My roots are Germanic in origin. My people and my community need me. My church and my family need me. I ask the Holy Spirit and the people of Christ to strengthen, lead, and guide me, and to bless me with your prayers. Cooper, who are you in this community? My name is Cooper Johnson. I am a child of God. I am a man, a young man, but still a man. My roots are Irish and German from my mom's side and Irish from my dad's side. My people and my community need me. My church and my family need me. I ask the Holy Spirit and the people of Christ to strengthen me and guide me and to bless me with your prayers. RJ, who are you in this community? My name is RJ. I'm a child of God. I am a man, a young man, but still a man. My roots are German and French, bowling, football, and BMX. My people and my community need me. My church and my family need me. I ask the Holy Spirit and the people of Christ to strengthen, lead, and guide me, and to bless me with your prayers. You have made public profession of your faith and spoken who you are in the midst of your community. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, 
to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Saying together, I do. People of God, do you promise to support these disciples and pray for them in their life in Christ? We do. We ask God to help and guide us. Now we make our way to the kneeler. I'm going to slide past you. Caleb is first. Family, I invite you to lay a hand on him, and together we will bless him. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to, to eternal life. Lord God of our ancestors, we thank you for what you have done and will continue to do with Caleb. Walk with him in life and keep the evil one from obstructing his path. You see all. You know where the water, where the water is deep. Keep him from danger. <laughs> <laughs> Keep him from danger. Be professional. Order his steps and guide his feet while he runs the race of faith. May the, <clears throat> may the good work that you have begun in him be brought in completion at the day of Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay, go quick, quick. <laughs> Cooper. Family, come on in. You can lay a hand on him and we will pray for him together. Let us pray. <laughs> we give you thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin and raise us to eternal life. Lord God of our ancestors, we thank you for what you have done and will continue to do with, with Cooper. Walk with him in life and keep the evil one from obstructing his path. You see all. You know where the water is deep. Keep him from danger. Order his steps and guide his feet while he runs the race of faith. May the good work that you have begun in him be brought to completion at the day of Christ. Amen. Amen. Do you want to do it on the stage? Yes. Yeah. yes. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Lord God of our ancestors, we thank you for what you have done and will continue to do with RJ. Walk with him in life and keep the evil one from obstructing his path. You see all. You know where the water is deep. Keep him from danger. Order his steps and guide his feet while he runs the race of faith. May the good work that you have begun in him be brought to completion at the day of Christ. Amen. Congregation, let us rejoice with these faithful disciples in Christ. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together, we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. Congratulations.
Friends, on behalf of we who are gathered here together and all of God's people, we offer our prayers to God. Let us pray. Giver of life, we pray for our relationship with you. We pray for the great chasms we feel with, we feel with you and we pray that you fill them with your love. Continue to surround us with your patience and with your grace. Giver of life, we pray for our confirmands. We pray for Caleb, Cooper, and RJ, the work that they have completed and the work that they will be called to in this world. We give you thanks for their faith. We give you thanks for the faith of their families and their loved ones who surround them. We pray that at all times they may know that you are near. Giver of life, we pray for your people who are enduring violence, for the people of Ukraine, for the people who continue to recover in Uvalde, for people who go unnamed, who can perpetually live in fear. Lord, we pray for your peace. We pray for your peace in war, a peace from stress, a peace from anxiety, a peace from discord in our communities. Lord, we pray for a peace that we cannot create and we cannot comprehend. We pray that you continue to work in our world, binding us to each other. Giver of life, we pray for those who are sick and suffering, and we offer to you now those names that linger in our hearts. Giver of life, we pray for our strong girls. We give you thanks for the privilege and opportunity to welcome young girls into our camp each, each year. We pray that as they have heard words of empowerment and inspiration, when they return to their homes and their lives, those words continue to ring true. May they always know that they are a gift from God. Merciful God, we thank you for hearing our prayers. Confident that you are always listening, we close these prayers as together we say, Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share that peace with your neighbor. And please be seated. If you're curious about what's going on in the life of our church, um, I invite you to pick up a bulletin. Our newsletter is out as well. If you wanted a copy of that, if you want to be on an email list, let one of us know. We'd be happy to do that. Just a couple of things to lift up for you uh, for today in the life of our church and our community. We, this month, our ministry and focus is loaves and fish. We are praying for them and we are gathering our, our coins and our gifts for that particular ministry. It's a food pantry here in Mount Morris. Particularly this month, we are gathering funds to pay for some ground beef because, of course, protein comes from meat, but meat can be well out of the range of what some people can afford. You know, it's, we, we, talk, we have talked about this um, as a council and maybe in the midst of conversation, it's kind of remarkable how many boxes or kits of, of easy to prep meals there are in the world and many of them call for a pound of beef which many people maybe can get a free box of this kit from, the lo from loaves and fish or a food pantry, but they may not have the beef to go with it. So we are, we are striving for that goal of gathering, uh, I believe it's about 100 pounds of ground beef that we can give to the loaves and fish. So if you want to participate in that, we thank you in advance for your gifts. Community VBS will be happening in July. If you have a bulletin, you'll see there's a QR code. It is truly as simple as hold it in front of uh, your neighbor who has a kiddo available for VBS. They can snap it. Couple of questions, it's super simple. It's absolutely free. It happens here. You can read the dates in the bulletin. It's in July. Um, it's an all week camp. We do it in the mornings. It is a blast. We do it in partnership with the Brethren Church and the Disciples United Methodist Church. We are grateful that we are asked to host it each year. 
We get a lot of kids. We would love to have uh, your kids or your neighbor's kids here as well. The only other thing is that if you are in the area and you would like to help out with some of the things we have going on, one thing is summer lunch program. We feed free lunches, free meals every Tuesday and Thursday in June and July. We are still looking for a few volunteers, a few uh, helpful folk. So if you have a Tuesday and Thursday in the morning available, we would love to have your hands, your feet, and your presence. So we just commend that to you. Friends, will you please rise as you are able, and we'll prepare for communion. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and when he gave thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, and when he gave thanks, he gave it for all the drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Confident our Lord is at work in this meal, we offer the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. For those who wish, you are welcome to come forward. The table is ready. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace.
Trinity. Holy, 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 all the saints adore thee, casting down the golden crowns around the glassy sea. Cherubim and seraphim falling down before thee, which wert and art and evermore shalt be. Holy, 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 though the darkness hide thee, though the eye of sinfulness thy glory may not see, only thou art holy, there is none beside thee, perfect in power, in love and purity. <clears throat> holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, all thy works shall Will you please rise, you're able.
and bold to feed the poor and shelter homeless cold to be your hands of justice right up hold Alleluia to be your presence is our mission blast to speak for your hands and voice to serve your people is our call and choice and in this mission we the church rejoice Hallelujah. friends i forgot the most important announcement of all that there is cake Right through that door over there, we would love for you to come and celebrate and greet our three young men. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.